Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the differences between EIGRP unicast and multicast uh, neighbor relationships. Um, specifically we're going to be focusing on doing it in a lab environment. Um, in this lab I have R1 and R2 connected on a point-to-point -point link and then routers 2, 3, and 4 which are connected to a shared Ethernet segment. So the first thing we're going to do is let's go to R1 with the goal of doing a connection to R2 through EIGRP. And the first thing we're going to do is just going to do a regular multicast connection. Um, and what I want to do first is I'm going to create an access list um, to just match traffic on 10, 0, 12, 255. And what we're going to do is we're going to do debug IP packet for that access list. Okay, now let's just do a router EIGRP, uh, let's say one, that's fine. And we're going to enable it for 10.0.12.0. Okay, pretty easy. So let's take a look at our log first. Show logging, and let's see what we got. So let me get my pen out. All right, so you can see on this first packet, we have the IP address with the source of 10.0.12.1. And let me actually make this a little bit thicker, okay. And we see the destination of 2240010. This is the default for EIGRP. So basically what we did is when we when we did that network command, um, and I can sh show run section, oh, let me drop the pen, uh, router. So what we can see is the network command 10, 0, 12, 0. Um, in the IGRP, this does not mean that we're advertising the network, like in BGP. The network command in EIGRP is slightly different. It basically works as a sort of an access list, meaning that if the IP address configured on the interface matches the network statement, the interface will uh, be enabled for EIGRP. And we can see that in the show IP EIGRP interfaces. So we could see gig 1.12 matched that and is now running EIGRP. Um, so what's going on now is our router is basically just blindly sending these multicast packets to a destination of 2240010 in hopes of creating a neighbor relationship with someone. So let's go ahead to R2, and R2 we're actually going to configure in the named mode. Um, so let's do CCIE, and let's do the address family IPv4 unicast, and we'll do the autonomous system of one. Remember, it has to match in order for the neighbor relationship to form. And let's do network 10.0.12.0. Um, and actually, you know what? In order to show you... Um, how this network command works like an access list. Let's just enable it blindly for 0000. zero, zero, zero. And what we could do is show IP EIGRP interfaces. And we can see that now we have three different interfaces that all have, that were all enabled. Because this is just basically saying network any any interfaces with an IP address are going to be put into the EIGRP1 process. Well, it's actually the EIGRP CCIE process with the autonomous system of one. So we can see loopback2, gig234, which is our shared link, and then gig112, which already has a peer on it. So if we go to R1, show IP EIGRP neighbors, we can see now that we have a neighbor relationship with 12. Great. So let's take a look at our show logging again. And we can see we're still sending 
multicast hellos um, do we have anything okay so we didn't do a packet capture so we're not gonna be able to see exactly what's going on in these packets but we do see that while the neighbor relationship was being created it did switch over from multicast to unicast so the source from our interface to 12.2 all right and and then once the neighbor relationship is formed now we're just sending unicast hellos again so we're, we're periodically sending unicast messages to 2240010 awesome so now let's change that let's um let's go ahead to router eigrp one and actually what let's do too is let's do clear logging make it easier for us and let's go ahead and say neighbor 10.0.12.2 and that neighbor exists on gig 12. this is going to define a static neighbor so basically, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but what we're saying is that the neighbor with this IP address exists off of this interface. Let's see, do show IP EIGRP neighbors. Well, notice that once we do that, the neighbor go goes down, and that's because R2 is still expecting it to be multicast. So if we go to R2, nothing. All right, so let's take a look at the logging again and see what's going on so now as you can see all of our packets are now going out with the destination of 10.0.12.2 instead of I think we might have even picked up a couple yeah we still had some in the buffer going to the multicast address so you could see here um, you could see exactly what happened it was sending multicast packets then we had a neighbor change where the neighbor is down and it even gives you the reason why it's because now it's a static peer which replaces multicast and then immediately after that the next packet we send has a destination of the static neighbor address so to go to the other side router eigrp ccie address family ipv4 unicast auto one um, Let's configure the neighbor 10.0.12.1. And again, this one is out gig 12. Now let's go ahead and do a show IP EGRP neighbor. And we've been up for two seconds. Let's go back to R1, do show IP EGRP neighbor. And we've been up. So again, we're not doing an actual packet capture, we're just debugging the packet. So showing you the log one more time isn't going to help anything, but just wanted to drive home the point that now we're doing a static relationship. I mean, uh, um, sorry, a unicast relationship, which is basically the same thing as a static, um, static relationship. And both sides need to be configured for that to happen. So let's uh i'm just going to you all take off that debugging because we don't need it anymore because what we're going to do is we're going to head over to r2 um for r2 we already have the let's do show ip eigrp interfaces one more time so we already have eigrp enabled on the shared segment between two three and four so let's go ahead to r3 and what we're going to do here actually on R3 is well, let me go into the address family first unicast autonomous system is one I'll show you again a more specific way to do the a network statement which is 10.0.234.3 which is my interface zero zero so this has to be an exact match. So we do show IP EIGRP interfaces. We could see that gig234, which has a peer, is enabled. So again, the network statement acts kind of like an access list. 
where the IP address matches this and is now enabled for EIGRP. Um, since we're in named mode, we have to go into the topology base in order for me to redistribute my connected uh, loopback. We're going to go into R4, and R4 we're going to be pretty simple since you guys have seen this by now. Address IPv4 yeah, Auto 1. Uh, we're just going to enable EIGRP everywhere. Okay. So let's head up to R2, although it doesn't really matter. We can take a look at either of them. And let's go to show IP EIGRP neighbors. So we could see now we are neighbors with one, which we had uh, unicast assigned. We're also neighbors with three and four. So this is really one of the great things about doing multicast neighbors. Again, we'll go to router three so we can just take a look at our shared segment. We now have a full mesh of neighbors between our router 2, router 3, and router 4. And all we had to do was enable EIGRP on that interface. Um, so what I'm going to do now is show you what will happen on R2 if I want to use a unicast neighbor instead of multicast. And what, what I mean by that is between R2 and R3. So let's see what happens. So let's go to router EIGRP CCIE address IPv4 unit mode 100 or 1, not 100. Um, so let's do neighbor 10.0.234.3 and it's out my 1.234 link. Let's do a show IP EIGRP neighbor, and both neighbors went down. So here's what happened. When we enable this link for unicast, R2 stops listening for neighbors on the multicast address, and it also stops sending multicast of uh, neighbors. Uh, stop sending multicast hellos excuse me so r4 is listening for you for multicast hellos it's not going to get any and it's going to drop now from r2's perspective because we um so to do show logging um from r2's perspective both the neighbors are down because static peer replaces multicast um but basically what's going to happen is those peers aren't going to reform because now we're listening for a static neighbor. So what we have to do is let's go to R3, which show IP EIGRP neighbor. We can see now we just have the neighbor relationship with four because we're both listening multicast. So on R3, router... Yeah, GRP, CCIE. Let's go ahead and configure the neighbor. 10.0.234.2.2.4.2 on 2.3.4. Now show IP, yeah, GRP neighbor. Okay, so now we're back up with R2, but again, we lost our neighbor relationship with R4. And that's because R4 is still configured for multicast. So it went down. So basically what this means is that if we want to get another full mesh of relationships in this shared segment, we would have to statically configure them between all the routers, which again, that's where you get into the n times n minus 1 divided by 2 scenario where let's say you're running um, a huge you know shared segment which maybe maybe you aren't but um, if you wanted to have a full mesh between all the all the routers let's say it was 500 routers you'd have to configure a ton of static neighbors now you wouldn't ever really run into that situation but for example, what if you're running a 
you know, a DMVPN with a thousand spokes. And from the hub as a troubleshooting thing, maybe you went, let's say R2 is the hub in this situation, and you said, oh, let me just configure a static neighborship between R2 and R3 just to see if the D DMVPN is having trouble with multicast. And you do that, and now you have 499 or 999 other routers who just lost their EIGR EIGRP neighbor with the hub. So be very careful where you're doing your static neighbor relationships. Um, it's quite easy to just turn it on, but you but really point to point is is going to be the safest spot to do it. Um, so I think that's it for this video. Um, I, I'm, I want to take a look at passive interfaces, but I think I'm going to do that in my next video. So if you have any questions about EIGRP relationships when it comes to unicast or multicast, please let me know. Um, if I was any, if I was unclear, I'm still trying to get used to this whole video thing. So uh, bear with me as I struggle, and eventually the the production quality will improve. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.